Hey, my name is Brett. I'm from the Bay Area, and I'm a street photographer. I'm a salesman by day and a photographer by night, just kind of how it works out with my schedule. And then also, I, I'm just kind of drawn to night photography in general, just because for a, multi a multitude of reasons, but uh, primarily just because I like the way um, you can create more dramatic scenes. However, I've been opening up a lot more to daylight and kind of harsh lighting this year more than more than any other time this is paradise paradise on earth <laughs> that tiktok tr audio paradise on earth. <laughs> i actually went out to chicago uh, a few months ago and it was you know it was like 100 degrees with like 90 percent humidity it was just like disgusting out but it just like created these really unique like long shadow moments that were super fun to capture because i'm more based down here in san francisco i get off work i go down to the city and you know it's usually sunset or into the night already it was fun to take like a whole week and just go out and and shoot during the day i think i want to go down a street and get it like this way I'm thinking maybe this crosswalk. <laughs> I've always wanted to, to get into photography, just never really made time for it. Once 2020 hit, I think everyone, including myself, had a lot of time to sit by themselves and isolate and reflect and kind of try and find creative outlets. I think that's where, you know, the creativity kind of spawned and I eventually pulled the trigger on a, on a camera. I bought a Canon Rebel, was my first camera. And uh, yeah, never looked back. It, it, it was something that you can do totally by, your, by yourself, which is great. The pivotal moment for me was 2020 and, and just having way too too much damn time on my hands and uh too many things i wanted to do and and i finally just made time to to get the camera i'm from a small smaller town up in northern bay area so every weekend i would go down to san francisco i just loved tall buildings and like a melting pot for street i mean yeah i i definitely tried shooting a lot of beach like coastal stuff landscape stuff at first but for me like going down to san francisco and and trying to get interesting characters was my primary goal. I didn't really know what I was doing until I sometimes don't even know what I'm doing still now. For the most part, I have an idea of what I'm looking for. I really wanted to figure out how the camera works. That was like the primary goal. I wanted to learn how to use a camera. Once I started to figure that out is when I was starting to look at compositions and framing. Now that I kind of have a really good idea, or I think I have a somewhat good idea of how to, how to do all that, you know, I'm kind of looking for more dramatic scenes. So that's kind of how things have uh, evolved over the last few years. I wear headphones when I go out and shoot, and sometimes I'll just throw on theme tracks. I think one of my go-tos is Taxi Driver, a Martin Scorsese. I just get in the, the zone a little bit more when i am got the right music on. So uh, yeah, I think what inspires me is, is the films that I really enjoy and picking frames out or characters or just kind of overall emotions that you get from watching um, some of your favorite movies and trying to find that or trying to replicate that somehow or trying to expand on that with your photography. That's what I try and do. Perfect stance. Yeah, the, power the, stand? yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a live feed from the East Bay that looks directly at the skyline of San Francisco. That I'm constantly watching that to see if there's any like interesting, maybe the fog's rolling in later, which I love to shoot, or you know, definitely storm tracker for sure. Love yeah. shooting in the rain and getting uh, reflections off the streets. Honestly, I'm trying to shoot as much as I possibly can. There's not a ton of planning that always goes into it. I just, if I have time, I'm, I'm going out. I just like going out mostly by myself and uh, just kind of being able to be creative out there and see if I can find something cool. I think so. Not the best background ever. No, I think uh, early going, I was I was more heavily uh, involved in social media. 
because I really wanted to get some followers to get some people to see what I was doing. And I think that you kind of lose sight of what the process of photography when you're you're chasing followers, you're chasing likes. Um, so nowadays it's just really, I mean, if I'm proud of what I, of the photo that I took, then I'm, I'm, I'm gonna post it. And that could be tomorrow, that could be two weeks from now. It doesn't really matter to me. I'd rather have some quality stuff that I'm, that I'm stoked about than just, I gotta post every day at 10 a.m you know, to keep that algorithm going. You know, I think mm -hmm. I think that's when you kind of lose sight of like what's really important. I default to 35 millimeter. That was the first one I, I bought for my, my new setup, my Sony. I can pretty much do anything with it. I can't get the Chrysler building if, if I'm like a block away, you know, get that Instagram crop uh, without putting borders around it. But everything else is, is pretty much good to go. Shooting horizontally and vertically, I love, I love that lens. Um, so I'd probably, have to say the 35. I was going to say London at first until you kind of uh, threw a curveball at the end of that question. Um, simply because I've been to the UK twice, but it was both both times were before, well before I started getting, you know, into street photography. So I always want to go back there someday, hopefully next year, um, spend some time and shoot some street. But I'd say I've been to New York a, a few times and it's got everything that I want that I'm looking for and, and the kind of photography that I like to do. That kind of urban setting, you get some of those kind of noir type characters in New York and just the lighting uh, everywhere, whether you're underground, you're above ground. Times Square obviously is insane lighting. Uh, there's just so much to work with out there. Um, so I'd probably say New York. This is just outside of Times Square. Uh, I like what's going on in this frame. There's it's, there's just so much drama that I, for me, you know, you, ha you have the the foreground, kind of the middle ground area with the, the dude on the bike wearing the, you know, waterproof hoodie, the car uh, zooming by, and then you have this beaming neon light coming from the right hand side that's just getting just enough side lighting on his face where you kind of get the outline of his face you can't really see it from here but if you zoom in on his cigarette it's there's like water drops everywhere on it all these raindrops are just illuminated by all this lighting that's happening so uh, I'm, I'm really happy with how this shot came out that that low angle definitely one of my favorites yeah and then chicago um like i was i mentioned earlier shooting in harsh lighting i mean i was sweating bullets i don't often shoot in shorts and a t-shirt and you know in san francisco it's it's pretty cold just year round and then I'm usually out at night so I'm usually um, in full gear but this shot was awesome because I mean the sun was getting super low I think there was like 20 more minutes really uh, where you could actually get some good lighting some good shadow I probably waited up on this platform on one of these train stations for an hour uh, waiting for the right subject trying to frame this was was difficult because I don't usually shoot from elevated platforms like this and then I got a guy with all black clothing and that long shadow and nobody else in frame it couldn't have been better getting that isolation kind of feeling and then yeah obviously you get the background and you get get that bloomy glow from that sunlight that's that's about to set so it's definitely one of my favorite shots and it was a challenging trip for me because I don't typically shoot in harsh lighting so this one was definitely one of my uh, prouder moments and then yeah the fog shot uh, definitely one of my favorites um, this is on the Golden Gate Bridge uh, which I'm terrified of, of heights maybe not like Chicago platform heights but Golden Gate Bridge is, is a little high up there it's a little steep so any Anytime I get a, a good shot on the bridge, it's it means even more for me personally because you know I'm usually having a, pa a panic attack up there. But you get the total silhouette action here. You get the fog, which adds so much at night uh, with these these street lights. You get these leading lines that are, are really wild uh, on the right hand side, and then you get this kind of disgruntled looking the end of the fence line on the left hand side, which which looks cool, which adds some some extra texture. And then somehow there's a car. Are, um, if you can see on the right hand side, the taillights are just like perfectly framed around this fence post. So there's just a lot going on in what looks like a simple frame. But for me, I mean, there's there's so much more going on internally when I'm when I'm shooting this shot and then getting that silhouette kind of dead center put a smile on my face when I was walking off that bridge. So definitely one of my yeah. favorites.